we've already got a UA and a GA account, both created and the main tracking code is in the website. And then on our forms, we've added this script. We've added the script code right here. So we've added for the first contact form on the submission thank you page, we've added the JavaScript event, the fire a G tag event for the contact submit. This is the action, this is the event category, and this is the label. And then we added another one for the application form. Okay, event action category and label. So we're gonna use those pieces of code when we create our new goal. So we're gonna make a goal, and this is gonna be called free quote, quote, free quote, submit. And this is going to be based on an event. And we're gonna add the category. So I'm gonna take the category, copy the category. I'm gonna copy, copy too much. I'm going to copy the action. And we don't actually have to have them all filled out. Like if we had multiple contact forms that were contact submit and we just wanted the overall one without the label, um, we could do it without the label. So that anything ever with just, you know, category and action being filled out would, would qualify. So if we wanted an overall, you know, any form filled out as a goal, we could do that. But I'm going to also put in the label. And then I'm not going to use value. Um, and there's no event value here. So we just say yes, but it's gonna be blank value. So it'll come in as a zero value, okay? If we had been ver doing these in the past, if but we haven't ever had these submitted before, we'd be able to verify goal and be able to see if any of these events occurred in the past seven days, and it would be able to verify that, but we haven't actually tested this event yet. So now we have that. Uh, we're going to make application submit and the same thing. And now I'm gonna take the application action and the application category without the code. And we can even use the label, but I'm in this case not even going to use the label just to show that it works either way. Okay, save. So now we have both of those as goals. So when the event is fired, it'll track the goal being completed. Okay. And then now we'll do the same thing on the GA, of course, it looks different because GA is very different. So here we need events and conversions. So events, first we need to do is make a custom event. Now, if the event has already been firing, we'll see it on this list and we can just turn it on as a conversion and it's actually much easier. But we're gonna create an event and we're gonna hit create and we're gonna do the same thing. Free, quote, no spaces, submit. And the event name will equal, and this is the action, event action is what they mean by event name. So in this quote, it's called contact submit, create. And then we're gonna create another one and I'm gonna take this name, I'm gonna keep that because we're gonna use that, to, that exact name to make the action or the actual conversion event. And then I'm gonna do application. Okay, and then on this one, we're gonna take the event action that we put into the JavaScript. So it's gonna be when the event name application submits fired, it's gonna make a new custom conversion event called application submit, create. So now we have both of these. I'm gonna also take that name. Now we need to convert these into a conversion event. So now we go to conversions and we're gonna make a new conversion and we simply put in the name. So when free quote submit happens, that is a conversion. Save. It's loading. Inconveniently thinking. Okay. Oh, dang it. Okay, well, we'll just do one of those. That was really strange. And then new conversion event, when application submit, it's gonna save. That was strange. And I don't think I can actually come in here and remove these events, which is interesting. Oh, there, it only let me do one anyway. It figured it out. So now when the event application submit fires, it'll track this as a conversion. And when the event three quote fires, it'll track this as a conversion. Uh, so that is how we're going to do our conversions. And then obviously we need to test this 
to make sure that that's actually the case, right? So we need to, the, the best way to test it is in live mode, because you can see the event and you can see conversions happen here in real time. So if I open up the website that I'm testing, and I submit form, test form. I should be able to see, hopefully, that a conversion event happens because in my conversion event occur, so I should, Looks like it knows form started. Sometimes with GA, I've found that it might take more than a day actually for it to start tracking. Usually GA will recognize it right away. So let's, or UA will recognize it right away. So let's first go into the events on real time for UA. So UA, it sees the contact form event that I just submitted, and it sees the conversion that I just submitted. So that's working. And in the same way, we should be able to go to GA and see the same thing. But again, I've noticed that sometimes there's a 24 hour delay for whatever reason before it really starts tracking the conversion and events. So let's try anyway. So we'll go to the real time. I'm hoping that GA4 gets improved. I really like the user experience of UA, but I'm also just used to it. There's my there's my contact form that was submitted. This was the event, but see, it didn't track it as a conversion. That's what I mean by sometimes it takes a 24 hour delay. Um, so tomorrow when we check back and do this and I fire it off, I should see the event and the conversion based on that event all at the same time. This is how we audit our work behind ourselves because the work is only as good as it is if we can audit, right? We don't audit, then we can't prove that we've done anything correctly. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.